In this lesson, we'll edit and customize our roof assembly. All right, so we're pretty well versed in our roof formations now for our residential project. So what I want to do is I'm going to come here to this formation, this footprint. We'll add a roof system to it using, you know, the methods we've learned for the rest of these roof styles. But then what I want to take a look at the assembly associated with that roof. So really quickly, let's go ahead and jump to level two. And I'm going to add some color to this so I can kind of see what's going on here. We'll go to consistent colors. And I'm going to go ahead and add roof by footprint to this building or this you know footprint of this house and I'm just gonna keep that 912 pitch that comes by default so let's go ahead and go to the drop down roof by footprint and let's add a two foot overhang check your defined slope and then we'll go ahead and just pick these edges and make sure your slope is set to 912 um, probably is already it's kinda set to that by default but we'll go around here and we'll just set this in and what this is gonna do it's actually gonna create that hip roof style basically means that every side has a slope. Now when we started out after we did our our flat roof style we did more of that uh, gable roof where only two sides had the slope and then you know the other two sides really didn't define the slope at all. Well this is a little bit different. In your hip roof style every side will define that slope. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and you can tell by the footprint how that's getting ready to turn out. So what we have here is our roof easy as that we just created a really simple roof system I remember uh, first getting into drafting many 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 years ago that was the roof was always the the top tough part for me because a lot of angle calculations and things like that but nowadays you can pick the footprint of the building and the software already creates this roof for you so I definitely enjoy that especially after uh, a little bit of time in my life where I didn't have a tool like that but anyways when I click on a roof any roof doesn't matter what kind of roof you got let's go to this drop down you'll see we got a basic roof area here and what this does it gives us generic options so right now what we have is our generic 12 inch so if I go to this edit type and then under structure here's where we can come in here and edit the assembly so when you're looking at this as I mentioned uh, probably earlier in the lessons the core this area here what's in between these two core boundaries more than likely is going to be your structure and also your sheathing. So it'll be your your rafters and any OSB board or any kind of sheathing that's resting on top of that. Above that, above this core boundary here is going to be your uh, layer. So it could be your moisture barrier and it also be your you know, maybe your asphalt shingle finish. Below was going to be kind of you could think of this as about inside of your of your uh, building or your attic or whatever because this will be actually where we place our jip board so keeping that in mind we'll be able to kind of construct and play around with what we have in place already now the great thing about Revit and the way it's set up is I can highlight an element and I can go to the properties and I can really quickly replace this guy with something that already has some details in it and that's the, what I like about Revit is I can I have that ability to kind of do a hybrid approach to modeling there's things that are already in place and built for me, but I also have that ability to kind of customize elements if I need to and customize assemblies. And if I wanted to take it one step further, I can create my own families. But in this case, we're just more concerned with the assembly and editing our assembly. So what we did was we switched this basic roof to a wood rafter with asphalt shingle, and it's also insulated. So let's check out this, this one. So we'll go to edit type under structure we'll go to edit and check out the degree of complexity here compared to the generic one that we were looking at earlier the generic one just had simple structure right in this place and you know a real simple dimension which was the overall thickness of the roof but it didn't take into account layers now I really like this portion of modeling because great thing about BIM is you're not only creating you know geometry to create something that looks you know real or generates a form to represent your idea but we're also able to apply some real-world data dimensions and materials to this model so there's some intelligence behind it it's not just a visual tool so let's go ahead and make some changes so for our roof system how these are set up right now when you look at this I'm gonna click on preview right here and let me move my mirror this is basically a cross-section view of our structure so this little layer here on the very top is our asphalt it's our finish so just below this is going to be our sheathing layer, which is right here, our plywood sheathing. And that's 5 eighths of an inch thick. And then this, the largest dimension here is going to be 
our actual structure or our wood joists. So this does a nice job of kind of you know representing how your roof assembly looks graphically. So that's something you may want to pay attention to. But as you notice, we'll get out of this real quick and we'll come right back. When you look at it in our view, it's just really simple looking, you know. I want more details. I want to be able to see my rafters. I want to I don't just want it to be represented by you know some kind of a vague thickness here. I want to be engulfed in the details. I want my client or you know people in the design team to know the details. I want them to see the actual design. This is cool once we're getting, you know, once we're working conceptually, but you get to a point where you got to start working with the details and bringing it to life. And this is really where this is going to come in handy. So what we're going to do here, let's click back on that roof, edit type. Now that we've kind of discussed how this works, go back here to your edit. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead, we're going to keep this asphalt shingle because that's definitely what we want. We're going to keep our plywood here, but we're going to get rid of this structure because what we're going to do is we're actually going to model in the actual joists and then our roof that we're going to place on top of the structure will be asphalt shingle plywood sheathing but we'll also add another one so we can get rid of this because we're actually going to apply this a little bit later so what we need to do is we need to think about what's in place here so if you want to maintain the thickness here let's say this is probably a two by eight wood joist we could probably keep that same measurement so we'll keep seven and a half in mind when we pick our joists so i'm going to go ahead and get rid of that one so now what that does, it gives me just my shingle, which is my finish, and it gives me my my uh, substrate, my sheathing here. So we're not done yet. So with my finish, let's go ahead and add a moisture barrier to this. So I'm going to click on my number so that this whole thing is highlighted black. I'm going to say insert, and when I do, it looks like I actually did it twice. Let me delete one of them. I want to move this down because this will represent the order in which this these layers are placed so if I were to go ahead and place this now and type this in this would say that my vapor barrier is sitting on top of my shingles and that is not accurate at all so let's go ahead and highlight that let's bump that one down so that my real finish is on top so now I can come in here and change my function so this is going to be a thermal you could either have thermal air layer or which in my case I really want a membrane layer and what we can do is we can create a whole new material for this. Now, there may not be one in here, so we can check and see what we have. So let's see if we have anything for roof. Assing roof. Anything special for roof layers. Here we go. Perfect. Roofing EPDMD membrane. And it already assigns a color to it, has an appearance to it. So I'm going to go ahead and take that appearance from the render. So just check this box. And what that does, it'll make sure... What you look at in consistent color view and what you render are similar. So we'll go ahead and say apply and OK. And now if we wanted to, we can add a thickness to this. Now the thickness of that membrane layer might be so small that you really won't be able to see it. But in our case, we might need to exaggerate it a little bit. We could leave it at zero if you wanted to. I've seen it left at zero. Or you can make it maybe an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch thick. We'll leave it at zero. I just want Revit to know that it is there. That dimension is so small. I'm going to make the assumption or make the decision to go ahead and leave it at zero. So I'll say OK. You know what we can do is we can rename this one. I'm going to duplicate and rename. So we're going to call this one, let's get rid of the rafter here portion. But I do want to say it's an asphalt uh, shingle roof and it's insulated. So we'll say apply, OK. And now you can see we've got a change in this on the thickness of this roof. And that's going to come in handy and that's going to be very important because the thickness of the structure is actually going to be represented by actual structure here in just a moment once we start modeling in that beam system. So there we go. So we've had the first part of our roof in place. So in the next lesson, we're going to create the actual studs for each one of the faces for this or the rafters, I should say. And we'll start modeling out how this is going to look. And then we'll be able to make some adjustments to the offsets to where this finish and also the substrate are actually resting on top of the structure so we have a more accurate representation of a roof. So I'll meet you in the next lesson where we'll start working with beams to create the rafters.